I've got a very special meet the owner today. I'm with Jim Davidson, who you may well have heard of. Certainly, if you're in the UK, you definitely would have done. OBE. <laughs> Jim Davidson. One boat's enough. That's what that means. <laughs> OBE, one boat's enough. Hi there. Good morning, Hi, everybody. So uh, Jim's been actually boating for a long, long time. I mean, your boating starts right back in the 80s, I think, if I remember rightly. Well, it started off uh, summer season in 1978 down in uh, Torquay, where I saw this lovely bay and I said to my manager, I wish you'd buy a little speedboat. So we went round to Paynton and we bought a speedboat, a little speedboat, a Fletcher. I know. A little engine on the back uh -huh. and we drove it back with our suits on across the bay. <laughs> Funny enough, the bloke who sold it to me now runs PME, the man engine dealers down in the pool. Oh right, oh yeah, fantastic. it's a small world isn't yeah, it? Yeah it certainly is, it certainly is. So we'll come back to your boating history yes. a bit I think. Let's talk about this boat first of all. So this is a Princess 61? Yes, Princess 61, 2004. 2004. It looks fantastic, I have to say. Well, she's an old boat, and it, it, was, a, it was a choice that was forced upon me, really, by not being able to afford a new one. <laughs> well, that's forced on most of us, I'm afraid. Yeah. And also, I love the shape of the 61 and yeah. the 66 and the 21 metre. I like the bulwarks. Yeah. Bullocks on the front. <laughs> Fantastic. Should we have a little walk around please it first do. of all? Please, please do. And perhaps you can show us around and then we can have a chat about your boating history and, and, yeah. and what kind of boating you do now as well, I think is always interesting. Well, probably the only original bit left on this boat now is this table. Right. But, uh, I went to the boat show and there were about 900 quid. I thought, oh, God, that's a lot for a table. <laughs> so I opened up this and there he was lying down, covered up by some bits and pieces. Fantastic. This had the old white upholstery, now this is silver tech uh, right. on there. Yeah, um, that's very smart. Yeah, I, I just I made the decision, buy old at a reasonable price, yep. and do it up. Right. These are the original seats. They look See, really good. Well, they look pretty good, that's the thing. But in reality, I've got another set of these cushions at home that you don't slide off because you sit here and you do this <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, uh, and of course your cushions don't sit up properly it's a salesman's nightmare yeah as you can see um but it's the old-fashioned yeah you know, old-fashioned walnut and uh, stone what they call covered leather yeah yeah it's very it's very of, the, of its age, isn't it? It's it, very of its age. And it still looks great, I think. Very, very Savoy. Yeah. <laughs> we, we put these bits on because there was a lot of sun damage on here, so we decided we'd go blue. Yep. And so these little things, the little bits of blue are, are parked everywhere. Makes sense. I love the light up on this side here, this sort of <laughs> obscured light. That looks great. And interesting that it's got the internal staircase, which is something you just don't see anymore. You don't see them anymore, and I can tell you for why. <laughs> when, you're, when you're upstairs, Right, and it's doing a bit of sea. Uh -huh. and you've got to run down to check your engine uh, things uh, because there's none upstairs. Yep. You tend to, to wobble a bit. It's a quite a little steep thing here. Yeah. In fact, if you can get up and down there with a scotch in one hand, a spanner <laughs> in the other, you're in the SAS overnight. It's, uh, but they are quite good. I wonder what you'd put there if you used to take that down. Yeah. Doesn't take up much space, really. No, no, I think, I think they're nice. These are nice. These are pretty much old. Um, princess standard things, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I can't tell you how comfortable it is because I'm too fat to get in it. <laughs> okay, well, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> That's it. And we've got the galley on this one, I see, down over on this side, which again is, is something you don't see anymore. And it's quite nice because it's separated off. Yeah. But it is kind of, you're still part of the scene, aren't you? Yeah, you are. I, I, I think I prefer the, the bigger ones, which of course leads to the to the stateroom. The yeah. 21 metres got a knife there, but this is out, out of the way a little bit. Yeah. It's out of the way. And of course, there's a downstairs and even more underneath there for the uh, washing machine and all the other bits that you can't stow anywhere. You just throw down there and make a mess. But oh, it's right. all, again, it's all wood and all lovely and wonderful. Yeah. So that's like a utility room? Yeah, there is a little utility oh, room. Oh, we need to see that. Can we have a look? Oh, yeah. We love stuff like this. This is hidden compartments. This is the... There you go. Oh, look at that. That's brilliant. Yeah. You don't see that anymore, do you? Because it's all full-beam master cabin. You shouldn't see it now, because I've just no. thrown a load of that stuff <laughs> down there, because you were coming. Brilliant. But you, you can put loads of things on charge down there. Uh-huh. Um, stow stuff out the way. Yeah. Stuff that doesn't go anywhere. There's, there's always not enough stowage space on boats, especially galleys. Yeah, absolutely. People like to cook. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a little junk room, isn't it? Yeah. And up here at the helm, I think you've done a few modifications up here, if I remember rightly. Yeah, I very rarely drive it from the helm, but uh, 
what what it had on originally was a Furuno system, right? Which I wasn't happy with. It was of a time, <clears throat> so I took those off and put these these two Raymarines on. It's the only place you can get them here. I could have stuck a big one up there, but I had the two down here. As I say, I very rarely use the helm. I use the helm uh, to to plot and do things. Mm. So you um, drive the boat mostly from the flybridge, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I do. Even yeah. at night, I do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I quite like that. So these went on. And then mm -hmm. I put um, a different radar. I put a, what's it, the uh, Quantum. Oh, right. Yeah. Brilliant. But it looked like a baked bean tin. Right. It didn't suit the boat. So I took yeah. that off. So she's had three radars on since <laughs> I did. So it's now got a thing that looks like a helicopter rotor blade, and it's superb. Fantastic. That's great. <clears throat> the great thing is, I learned how to do uh, navigation plotting on paper. Right. At a month course of that. I thought this is brilliant, and then I, of course, press a button and it does it. <laughs> does it all for you. Yeah. <laughs> but it's nice to know the, the principle, isn't it? I think yeah. it's a bit like knowing how to add up. Yes, you can use a calculator, but if you understand the basics. Yeah, and it, it also makes, makes you sit at home thinking, I'm looking forward to my boating, I'm learning about stuff. Yeah. And of course, it helped me with me past my yacht masters. The, other, the, other pro the only problem I have, and what I was going to do, and what I didn't do in the end, because these are 2004, the engine have got analog readouts. Right. So if you look here, I've got a Ford Anglia 1973 fuel gauge. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Yep. Okay, and on a good day, that'll do this. Right. Okay, so I'm not really sure. So I was going to have it all changed. I spoke to Bonings. Uh, I spoke to Sea Talk. Raymarine have been fantastic for me. Mm. And they said, OK, we can change it for the NEMA 2000 system. So we'll go from analog to digital, from digital into all your multifunctional displays to give me permanent readouts all the time. And then I spoke to my captain of a Type 45 destroyer. Right. With the most digital thing in the world. And he said, stay analog. Really? Yeah. Right. <laughs> he saved me a fortune. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. And I see you've looked like you've upgraded <coughs> the thrusters as well. Yeah. <laughs> There's the story. <laughs> so, so I used to have one of them things of like a little boat. So I updated the thrusters. They're not hydraulic, but they're, these are the next best thing. Really, really good blades, nice and quiet. And I spoke to uh, Side Power and said, "What's the best you can do?" And they did a, they did a fantastic job by putting these on. And of course, my uh, little remote control. This, this changes your life. Yeah. These, you can just lean over and do it. It will hold you alongside. Uh, and it makes all your passengers a little that frightened to death. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's interestingly, when they put them on, the guys put the, the props on back to front. <laughs> and so when I still had the old controller, I came out and, and I, hang on guys, these are on back to front. Don't worry, we'll rewire the controller. So when the new controller went on, they wired it up cockeyed. Right. So when I took her out to be anti a while ago, up at brilliant Osmotech, they don't realise that the prop went on back to front. <laughs> and they put them on the right way. Brilliant. So as I come out into Port Hamble, 23 knots of tide, yep. and I'm trying to park this thing, there's people flying off the deck, holding ropes, <laughs> things smashing. I said, I've lost control of the boat. <laughs> and Craig, from who sells SUR tenders, who was selling me that tender on the day, said to me, oh, I think your bow thrust is wrong back to front. <laughs> <laughs> Saved the day. Oh, it's embarrassing, isn't it? That's yeah, nice. so this is the upgrade. This this is this now has upgraded electronically perfectly mm -hmm. uh, with the night vision and the augmented reality, etc., uh, etc. Et it, it it's just makes you feel safe. Oh, They're look at that! Good boys, toys. Yeah, yeah. And is that the one that works at night, where you get like a sort of night vision situation? Uh, well, it, it's quite bright at night, but yeah. in case it's not bright at night, I've got the the Fleur as well, which will will come on now. There she oh, is. Look at that. So, so you'd see that thing. same picture, presumably even at night? Well, you get a much, much better picture at night, actually. But right. what this is really, really good for is and what I like. Your biggest problem I had, oh, I was going to speak to the government about this. <laughs> <laughs> lobster pots. Yes. Lobster pots. When you think a lobster pot uh, stopped dead in the water, one of our new aircraft carriers, uh -huh. wrapped around its prop. Yeah. These are dangerous. I had, a, I had a drive shaft pulled straight out of my engines with a lobster pot in mm -hmm. Brighton years ago in the old 55. Yeah. So well, now this will spot them. Oh, Not right. only will it spot them, it will put a little yellow ring around them and bleep and it will follow them, track them, look them. It will search in front of me and find the lobster pots. That's and amazing. And it will alert me. And it's just like looking at the head up display of a fighter jet. It's just marvelous. Yeah. Well, I had a, an outdrive destroyed on my boat a couple of years ago there you go. by a lobster pot. And what it was, I saw the pot. 
mm. went well round it and they'd left a floating line 50 metres long drifting well, off this pot. Now that's criminal that. Because, yeah. Because, you know, if you're... I just think something needs to be done. I mean, our fishermen, we've got to feed the country and our fishermen are great. We all love the fishermen. Of course. But this wouldn't hurt to have a little little fluorescent boy, would it? Or a little... A little radar, flag. A little something. Yeah, like exactly. Yeah. And, and, and ideally not loads of line floating off this. it. Watch this park. Gone. That's now gone away. And we can go back to uh, looking at people sneaking up behind you. Oh yeah, fantastic! That's brilliant. That's basically... Should have seen that bit when I reversed my dinghy into the wall the other day. But that's another <laughs> story. We'll swirl around that. Fantastic. Okay. Cool. Should we look downstairs? Sure. Because this is a boat that predates the the full beam master cabin, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if we come down here, this is the VIP cabin, which which was what you'd get on a forty-five or even my old fifty-five was about this size. Right. The. Uh, how they've actually found people to make a, a mattress out of granite, yeah. I've no idea. But, <laughs> it's uh, impressive, isn't it? Yeah, but you know, you need a new mattress, stick a new mattress on. Yeah, makes all the difference. And these are the loos, mm -hmm. which I altered again. Uh, the, the old boat had the suction uh, toilets and I hated it. it kept, we used to have a phantom crapper, as he was called. What was that suction overnight? So Hizbatech <laughs> put in three new electric toilets, which and a new tank system. So now this boat smells lovely. It's great. Wife's really, really happy. <laughs> well, you know what so they say. for me, the side power system was the best. To her, the toilet. <laughs> what do they say about wives? Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> I've had five happy lives. I, I remember a man saying to me once upon a time, not saying to me, saying to the audience, uh, that, uh, that he was not going to get married again. He was just going to find a woman he didn't like and buy her a house. Yes. <laughs> Well, the worst story ever is my Princess 55 cost me £8 million because I said, right, that's it. I'm not getting married again. I'm going to go and buy a boat and live on that. So me and little Kev, my roadie, we went up to the boat show. I bought a Princess 55, uh -huh. went to celebrate at the Guinness stand, and the woman that sold me three pints of Guinness became my fourth wife. Wow. Yeah. I actually said to her, you're going to be my fourth wife, you. And she gave me a Guinness cheap. <laughs> <laughs> so just so just briefly, you're ahead. <laughs> just briefly, I was ahead. Yeah. Fantastic. And I see you've got a TV fitted in the in the ceiling on it because again, this sort of predates the. Yeah. Um... Well, I inherited these. It, it's a, let's have a look what it. Th this actually isn't a TV. All right. It, well, it's not rigged up as a TV. It's rigged up as a DVD player, so you uh, can sit there and put DVD on. That They're makes very sense. rarely used. But, yeah. Uh, I didn't want to take them out because it'd just leave a bloody great hole. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. <coughs> so that's the VIP cabin. Yes, let's have a little look. Here's the master. Okay. Yeah, it's a decent size, isn't it? I mean, it's not the full thing that you get now. Until you. You know, wife wants to get undressed, yeah. time you throw the stuff in, plus two dogs. Ah. So one dog sleeps down there, the other one sleeps in the middle here. <laughs> I sleep on the end or in the in the twin cabin. And okay, a nice a nice bathroom. Uh huh. En suite. But again, you're an old boat, so look. That's a bit warped. Yeah. So when you get in you gotta this is the price you pay for having an old boat. Yeah. But look at this. Pristine, brand new toilets. Yep. On a on a 2012 boat or a 2011 boat, old toilets, old stuff. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. For what it costs to upgrade, it just transforms your yeah, life on board, doesn't it? Yeah, I'll the prices in a second when we sit back up there. Cool. And then we've got the little one here that my brother said, it's like sleeping on a ironing board. Well, I quite like this little cabin. Yeah. And actually, this is what you gain to some degree by not having the full beam master cabin, isn't it? Because this is usually pretty small in a modern boat, whereas this is a decent size, isn't it? Yeah, and of course, if you've just got a master cabin and not this, when you have a row with your wife, you're there with her all night. <laughs> <laughs> There's nasty no business. To go. <laughs> but look at all these lovely cupboards. It's fantastic. Yeah. And because they're guests, you know, the guests are hardly ever bringing any clothes. It's all full of life jackets, first aid kit, etc., etc., etc. It basically gives you extra storage. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like a junk room for some people, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. They just get all their clobber in there and it keeps the rest of the boat free. And there's another heads here. So is this... I'm getting these yes, right. Three heads. Three yeah, heads. This, this is the day heads. Right. But this has got the best shower as well because there's a little seat in it. You can sit there and shower away to your heart's content. Ah, yeah. 
and it's en suite to that cabin. So all the cabins yeah. are en suite. All cabins are en suite. That in a 64 <coughs> mode, it's There's even an en suite in the uh, crew cabin down the back. Right. Which I ripped out to tell you the truth, so I can store more booze. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not used as a crew cabin at all now, it's just a storeroom. Yeah, well I think that makes sense, doesn't it really? Yeah. Fantastic. Let's have a look around the outside then. This is a little dinghy. I, uh -huh. I, I struggled forever. I didn't struggle, I didn't want a dinghy. Right. I think they look a bit ugly on the back. They always look like baboons' bums. <laughs> and of course it doesn't fit and they say, oh, it'll fit, it'll be fine. But I just think it spoils the look of the boat, but it's great fun to have. Yeah, they're very practical, aren't they? That's a 20 horsepower Suzuki on there? Yeah. They must go quite well. Well, it does. If there's two of you on it, it's very difficult to get on the plane unless you turn the wife into the figurehead who's hanging over the front, <laughs> of, <laughs> over the front like that to try and get her on the plane. <laughs> And this is what I love about this boat, the look of it. This is just, I turn back every time I park her up. Yeah. First thing I say is, phew, and, then, yeah. <laughs> and then secondly, I say, just look how beautiful she is. Yeah. These are a bit naff, but they're wife friendly, change over quick. Uh, okay. Friend, yeah. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, they are neat. Yeah. And this is, I mean, there's actually, considering it's a 60 foot boat, which I appreciate is a, is a decent size of boat, but there's a real sort of little ship feel to this because you've got these sort of bollards rather than cleats. You've got these raised bulwarks here. It's just beautiful. I yeah. love this boat. By Side door seat, by the helm. It's kept you going. Look at this. Beautiful. And even things like the fact that it's got the vertical stanchions, whereas a lot of boats, if you look at one next door, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. kind of forward sloping. And this is that. It's a kind of like a motor yeah, yacht thing, isn't it? Field, isn't yeah, it? totally, totally. And those, those raised bulwarks again, I don't know if you can see they that. They look lovely. It's, it's absolutely good. Yeah. And the anchor as well going through the stem rather than hanging over the front. Yeah. It's like a little motor yacht, isn't it? It is. It is lovely. The bimini up there. Mm -hmm. It's got lights in it. It's great. But, you know, it's a, it's a really, really good, sturdy, beautiful boat. Yeah. And as I say, I'd only, I'd only change her if I suddenly got an extra million quid to spend. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. But and if she's. You, if you look at the the figures for this, I bought this off of. Um, the, bike, the guys down at Salton's Marina, uh, you, Boats UK, is uh, it? Boats.co.uk, yeah. The ones that were up uh, up uh, Essex. Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> I was looking for a, a 61 for ages, and there was one in Swanwick, and the guy didn't want to sell it, and so miraculously, this one turned up from Spain. And she was a bit in funny order, and I went down to see it the day before I was supposed to. And there was a man working on another boat. And I said, what's this boat like, mate? Oh, he said, I'll be doing that in a minute. Some, some geezer's coming down to see it. And I said, <laughs> I'm the geezer. <laughs> and so it, they, they told me exactly what was wrong. With it. You could see the fiberglass through the teak. Right. And so that t I took the, t put this flexi teak down. I kept yeah. real teak in the cockpit and real teak on the bathing platform because the cockpit's covered in the carpet. This flexi teak went on. Yeah. I think the thing with the flexi teak is it's just pretty much maintenance free, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It looks, it looks nicer. Yeah. It looks nicer. I think it's a bit more cost effective having it down. I need to get a snake up there as a bird shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a, an adorable boat. Yeah, it really is. It's, it's got a charm to it, hasn't it? Yeah. Definitely. And so, it's um, not a high-low platform, this, of course, so you lift your tender on and off with the passerelle. Yeah, yeah. So. What do you do? This is what I've always said to people. Don't be afraid to buy an old boat if you've got the money to do it up because these hulls are fantastic. Princess yeah. hulls, particularly. No osmosis or whatever. There's so many firms around now to help you do your boat up. Osmotech built most of the inside of these new bits for me. <clears throat> so I pay 700 and, no, 373,000 for this boat. For a lot of boat. About 160, 170,000 pounds on it. Okay, so three, so four. add them two together. Whether she'll be worth that yep. up to someone, I don't know. But this, what I've got here now, is the most upgraded, beautiful 61 princess in the world. Yeah, and someone wants a 61, this is the boat to buy. But she's not for sale because there's not another boat I'd rather like unless you go to a 58 Fleming. But even <laughs> my wife said, I'm not getting on that. That's an old man's boat. <laughs> I said, the last time I looked, I was an old man. <laughs> no, understood. And I think you're absolutely right. And what's nice as well is that I think when you go that route, you get to put your own touch on it. Whereas you buy a boat and everything's done. It's just like <coughs> yeah. you bought, especially secondhand, you've always bought somebody else's boat. Whereas this 
becomes your boat, doesn't yeah, it? it does. What I would do in future, what we, we talked about earlier is, I would look at a boat now, there's a, there's a 67 over there, which is okay. She's a 2006, so as old as this one. Yeah. I'd look at it and I'd work out exactly what I want done, price that up and get it done immediately. Right. It's bit by bit by bit, she's in, she's out, she's here, she's there. Yeah. Get it done how you want it and then, then you, you've got a boat for life. Excellent. This boat will last forever now. And she's called Princess Mitchie, there's obviously a reason for that. Well, when I had the 45, I renamed the 45 Afghan Plains after the old Princess 55. And I wanted to buy a bigger boat and she didn't want any of that at all. So with a couple of glasses of Whispering Angel <laughs> and a few other little drinks, uh, I said, I'll name the boat after you. Okay. So she was going to be called um, MV Nagging Old Cow. <laughs> but we called it Princess Mitchie because my wife's name is Michelle. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's fantastic. Should we have a look up on top? See sure. what you've done up there. This is the best bit. This is the bit that I love when she's underway. Uh huh. She sits in the water. Fantastic. The trim tabs hardly work at all. Right. Well, they're very well balanced, aren't they? Very well balanced. She sits like a ship. Yeah. And uh, she likes to do 1600 revs. Right. That, that's my cruising. I, I, I can get 16 knots with the tide, you know, an old mm. average tide in the zone. I can get 16 knots at about 1600 revs, and that's great, which gives me lots of power, but I don't burn much fuel. And I feel she just sits lovely at that. Yeah. <clears throat> I've got a cold, by the way. I had a, <laughs> I had a COVID test yesterday. I'm okay, don't worry. I've just got a... <laughs> Let's dive overboard then. Yeah. And so what's the top speed of this one? Top speed's about 32 knots downhill. Right, okay. So I can take her up to 2.2 two there. Okay. And what engines are those? These are the man, uh, the, the smaller ones, the 800s. Right. Yeah, they're quite good. Yeah, it's plenty of power, that, isn't that, it? It's not been without problems. <clears throat> the engines have been fantastic. And PME have been looking after them superbly, but a um, little tiny wire that tells you your gearbox pressure is wrong and that alarm goes off, makes one bottom go tight. <laughs> you run down these stairs, taking your life in your hands, like going down the side of K2, only to find there's nothing wrong with your pressure. Right. So, changed a lot of sensors, changed all the injectors, rebuilt a lot of stuff, put all new pipes, still that little tiny bit of wire that lets you down. So now, all the time now, I have a dehumidifier and a, a heater in the engine on all the time. Right. Take that dampness away. Yeah, yeah, no, fair enough. And what we do have plenty of here is screens. Yeah. Well, these two, that you know, once you start splitting them into quarters, I mean, one is enough, but I drive a lot up here, and I like to be up here in the dark as well. I like to drive at night. Mm. This one's basically a backup one for night time. I can put the FLIR on there or my uh, radar. Okay, the FLIR is the sort of night vision thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, for yeah. looking infrared. So if I go out at night, I'll have radar there, FLIR there, and chart there. Right. So, I mean, you can just sit up and, and check that wonderfully. Yeah, yeah. And it's a terrific view from here, actually, isn't it? Out yeah, here exactly. at the front. And, and you can in, see the snakes. I was just about to mention the snake. For anybody wondering what that is on the uh, sun pad on the front, that is a rubber snake. <laughs> <laughs> and, and those are brilliant for keeping seagulls off. Seagulls hate snakes, it's I, a fact. I had an owl, you know, one of those owls yeah. you buy? Well, yeah. they pecked his eye out first <laughs> and then pecked his head off. <laughs> oh, dude, there was a guy here on this boat here. He said, I'm sending up a drone to look at the top of my mast and about 20 seagulls attacked this drone. He had to land No it. way. Seriously. Yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah, these, are, these are tough seagulls. Yeah. <laughs> I don't take any prisoners, do they? No, they don't. Fantastic. So all this is all new upholstery, yep. new deck, yep. new table. That's a bit knackered to get that changed. Mm -hmm. um, new radar. Oh, that's the one you were telling me about. Yeah. And, and the, the interesting bit with this, it's got a very, very good communications kit in it digitally because I do a lot of filming from here and you know what it's like. You've got to download stuff and get it off. So yeah. normally when you're uh, in marinas like this, their Wi-Fi is not too brilliant, but this can transmit from anywhere, any place, any time. It's really, really good. Very powerful. Excellent. Oh, that's helpful. Yeah. There you go. Superb. Great, isn't she? Yeah. Lovely boat. Really lovely boat. And, yeah. and I can really feel your enthusiasm for it as oh. well, which is, you know, which is brilliant. Stood here 
and it really makes it worthwhile stood in a rotten freezing dressing room in Darlington waiting to go on. <laughs> <laughs> no offence to Darlington. No, no, I understand. Brilliant. Should we wander downstairs and it'd be interesting to hear about a bit of your boating history. Sure. And, uh, and also <coughs> interesting to hear what you do with this boat would be good as well. Just while walking past, we want to stick the camera into the engine room. Is that easy to do or is that a pain? Don't worry uh, if it's a pain. No. Just move Maggie the baggy. There we go. She's a celebrity now, you know. A what? Maggie the baggy. She's a celebrity now. Maggie the, oh, Maggie the baggy. Yeah. Uh, hang on, hang on. Uh, that. There she goes. Ah, yeah. fantastic. That's so it's really cramped little place, don't you? Help yourself. And there we go, MEN 800s, I think you said. Yeah. It's a pretty decent engine room, actually, isn't it? Once you get into it, I mean, you haven't got a standing headroom or anything, but you wouldn't expect to. Well, yeah, I have to breathe in to check my oil. <laughs> get through those little stanchions. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> and conventional shaft drives, so all nice, dead simple gearboxes on the back, shaft that goes out underneath there. Ideal. Cool. I'll come back out it's of there. Quiet. Now I've changed all the injectors and the valves. Yeah. She's lovely and quiet. Hers. You okay there? Yeah, absolutely fine. Brilliant. I'm always a bit one handed with the GoPro. Yeah. Cool. I think you're the all uh, things still up there. I do love your enthusiasm for boats. Oh, thank you. So, Fleming or Nordhaven? Oh, well, it depends, I think, how fast and how far you want to go, because you want Nordhaven for sort of really serious range, and Fleming gives you a bit more performance. Yeah. So, it depends what you want. Cool. Do you want Actually, to should, we, should we sit inside, just sure. because sometimes you get a little bit of wind noise on this, and it, it's, uh, it, <coughs> it helps to avoid that. Awesome. So... Right. Tell, oh, yes. tell me where the boating started for Jim Davison. You mentioned the Fletcher Speedboat, the so Fletcher that was obviously the, the first one. The, f the first one was the Fletcher Speedboat, uh, Torquay 78, sunk that. Right, like you do. <laughs> well, to be honest with you, uh, it's, it, the newspaper said I hit some rocks. I didn't hit another boat playing around, you know, trying to wash someone's just hijinks and it put a big crack along the side of it. I broke the collarbone. Oh. Yeah, I learnt a lesson then. Yeah, mm. yeah, the hard way. And then, I, someone sold me an inboard boat called a Zeus. I've never heard of them since, or I didn't even hear of them then, but they had an inboard motor. Right. It's quite good. And then I bought another little boat for my mate Roger Kitter, the comedian who was a support act and felt a bit left out, so I bought him <laughs> a speedboat. Uh-huh. And then one day, I went to Paul Powerboats. Right. And I had a look round and I bumped into this bloke driving a forklift. Mm -hmm. And I said, are these boats any good? He said, yeah. He said, they're great boats. I said, I might buy one of these. He said, well, I'll do you a deal. <laughs> forklift driver's doing me a deal for a boat. <laughs> and uh, it was Robert Braithwaite. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And we were friends until the day he sadly passed. Wow. And I bought a 31 foot offshore. And one day he sat at the boat show with me and my current wife. <laughs> and he said, Jim, you know, he said, I know you're living away now, whatever, but if you want me, he said, I'd build, I'll build you a, a, a boat, a, a Superhawk, mm. a 43. Uh, I'll build it at cost for you. Wow. And, and she sort of said, in a roundabout, why? He said, I'll tell you for why, Michelle. He said, because we were struggling ages ago at Paul Powerboats, and a young comedian came in and bought a 31-foot offshore cash. And he also became a friend and was nice to all our staff and invited them to his shows. He said, and people don't forget things like that. Brilliant. He was great. He said, you yeah. know what, Jim? Pe we don't change. People around us change as we get more successful. You find if your focus changes. And I loved him. Yeah. And I had the 31, but then I wanted something I could live on. 
Right. So the Princess 55 came along. I should uh, just mention, just very briefly for those who don't know, uh, Robert Raithwaite was the guy who started Sunseeker and yeah. ran it pretty much right way through its whole life and built it up into the international powerhouse that it became. So just in case anyone was wondering who Robert Braithwaite is, yes, that's, yes. that's and, the guy. And, and I repaid him back by getting him a front page of the newspapers because he asked me to launch the boat show at Earl's Court right. in 90, beginning of 91, I think, January. Yeah. When the first Gulf War was about to happen. So a joke I told while I was on stage was, <laughs> what has Baghdad and Hiroshima got in common? Nothing yet. Which, which, which is fine to tell in the pub, yeah. but not particularly in public. And so I had to apologise a bit for that to <laughs> everyone in the world. Yeah. But I said to him, I, I'm, I need a boat. I can live in London as a flat in London and I can take it down to the summer seasons. So I went to the boat show and looked at a... Um, a princess right and i remember going to see what was his name piles david piles. david Powell, yeah lombard was it lombard finance david Powell worked for princess he was a sales there was director another guy david piles i think it was a bit confusing anyway, yes he worked yes, for lombard right. finance and yeah. we had a drink and i said what do you think what boat he said well it's not for me to tell you what boat jim but what i would say is Borrow large and pay back long. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. I bought. I borrowed the money from him. Borrowed some money. Bought yeah. the Princess Fifty Five, and bought those three pints of Guinness that cost eight million. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that was it. And I loved the Fifty Five. She was yeah. great. Yeah. And then I piled up with Vaughan Brown, mm -hmm. who uh, I went round Scotland with with your old pal Steve Carey in the, yes. rib, in the rib race with the SAS and the SBS and all that. Yeah. And uh, and he persuaded me to buy a Princess 65. Right. And I put 50,000 quid deposit down, ordered the MTU engines to fit in it. And then something went wrong. I think it was a divorce. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> and so that had to be cancelled. And so goodbye, 50 grand. So oh. That, that, that. And uh, I remember Marine Seacole, who were the dealers, said, don't worry, you'll get that back in the next boat you buy. Yeah. But I never bought another new Princess, so that was the end of that. Uh, uh. So then you're out of boating for a bit? I sold the, the Princess 55, yeah, I think domestic stuff, yeah. not because of a lack of boating or money, Yeah, but their money. <laughs> and, uh, and then I went to live in Dubai and I thought, I've got to get one of those boats they go out fishing with, like a Boston whaler. Ah. So I got an Al DN. I bought it at the Dubai Boat Show. Right. Uh, 36 foot long, um, two bloody great 250 horse uh, Suzuki's on the back. Yep. Went fishing in the Straits of Hormuz every weekend. It was fantastic. I had a great four years with her. Brought it back here, um, got it shipped back, and s sold it in the end to the Prime Minister of Gibraltar's brother, right. who has still got it. It's a lovely, lovely boat. I used to go, I come down here one morning, and I say, right, I'm going to Torquay. So I'd go to Torquay. Wow. To spend two nights there and come back all on my own. Yeah, brilliant. And taking the sea on, it was it was. Marvellous. I was going through a, a bad time at, at, at the time. The 2013 one, a brilliant year for me. A lot, lot going on. And so I, did, I just used to go off and do boating on my own. It was quite a, easy enough to park and, <laughs> and go through Portland Race flying. Yeah. Uh, but then no one wanted to get on it with me. So I, <laughs> I, so I, I then bought a Princess 45 off Dell at Solent Yachts that sold it to me. I like him. Yeah. And it, because you've had a 55, a 45 seems small. So chatted the wife up and persuaded her I'd name it this after her and I bought this 61. Brilliant. So how long have you had this one now? This is its fourth season now. Okay. So by next year really might be the time to sell her and move on but as I said whatever I look at I quite like the Princess 21 meter. Mm. I think that's the best boat Princess ever made to be honest with you. Yeah. And uh, but whatever the price is, I don't know. They're probably seven, eight hundred thousand quid. But stick a hundred grand on it to do it up. Yeah, it will be a, you know, a year up at Osmotex being turned into a modern boat. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think as well, there's something to be said in the UK for once you get much past sixty feet, it starts to become a little bit more of a challenge to get into places and, mm. and that sort of stuff. So I think there's possibly that to be considered as well. We're not as well set up in the UK for anything. Well, but here's the thing. Let's say I can't get into Yarmouth and I can't pick up a boy. I can find somewhere to park up overnight, good anchorage, but I'm going to be like this. Not with a sea keeper, you're not. Not, <laughs> not, not with a sea keeper on the back and, and a good set of fins on the side. You're going to be sitting there like an aircraft carrier. Yeah, that's true. That's very mm. true. So what do you use this boat for? Where do you go? Where have you taken it? What's been your longest trip? 
mainly I use this boat for sitting in and writing, making the TV stuff, editing, right. doing bits and pieces. As I say I've updated all the electronics on it. Yeah. The furthest I've been with this was good fun taking her to London. Right. I enjoyed that and yeah. bringing her back from London. I'm going to Guernsey this year. August because I'm doing a gig there so uh -huh. the rest of the Solent boat squadron are coming with me so three boats are going down there <laughs> and uh, and then that will probably be the biggest trip yeah to Guernsey. I'm not a great goer out I'd, I'd like to be able to spend enough time to take this round Britain it's yes. not the right boat to do it I might think I'll wait till I get the Fleming to do it <laughs> this Fleming keeps cropping out doesn't it oh, I, I think they're great yeah it's because we all want to be captains, don't we? We all want to <laughs> cruise along and do this and sit there and have all the toys there. You know? Yeah, it's um, a proper little ship, isn't it? Yeah, now I've done my yacht masters. I want to challenge myself. Yeah. I was dragged across the line there, I think. I was so, I'd <laughs> scraped by by the skin of my teeth with the man saying, halfway through, Jim, you and leading lights are complete strangers. On <laughs> <laughs> the front line, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. Good, good. And I think we should just touch on as well, because a, a lot of uh, aquaholic viewers are from all over the world. Um, and just very briefly, your your history, eh? you know, how you actually made your money and, and, and oh, got well, into this. I mean, obviously, for most people, they kind of know, but we yeah. ought to touch on it. I was uh, I, I started a, rather, I think, like the X Factor or Britain's Got Talent or America's Got Talent. I won that in 1976 as a stand up comedian. Very quickly, uh, Benny Hill contacted me and said, come to Thames Television and meet a producer then. I joined a, a series there, then I had my own Jim Davidson show there on top of the bill of the London Palladium, and then I did a, a show about snooker that everyone thought was awful, but we had huge ratings. I remember it. And what? then I took over the biggest show in the country at the time, the Generation Game, and I oh, did that yes. for seven years. Yeah. But through all that, my, my, my bread and butter work is a live stand-up comedian. I've always been slightly mucky, always been slightly non-PC. <laughs> of course you get accused of being racist and sexist and all that, but yeah. as long as you sleep well and you censor yourself, that's fine. Yeah. And comedy moves on. Now, uh, during the convicts, <laughs> Uh, a year and a half ago, I started a streaming TV channel called Ustream, which right. is U S T R E M E. Okay. And we have four television channels on that station, and uh, and it's also not just streaming lots of content and lots of shows of various people, but we do scheduled shows as well. So Tuesday night, Thursday nights, so I'm on at six thirty or six o'clock, and we do a Sunday night live show from our studios in Fareham, which is hysterical. Right. I mean, there's no script, no anything, there's a load of comics being dark. <laughs> uh, and uh, that's going really, really well. Uh, awesome. in, in the 18 months that it's been going, we've now gone through 10,000 subscribers and we'll be going out to, to business, if you like, where, where people are now investing in the, in the TV channel, which is, which is good. Fantastic. And where will people find that if they want to see it? You can, you can go online and find it, just dial in Ustream. Right. But U-S-T-R-E-M-E. Uh, okay, yes. yeah. Yeah, you have to subscribe to right. it unless uh, you want to watch a channel on there called Cenotaph, which is dedicated to veterans. So there's lots of films that the veterans might want to see on there, or we're putting them on there now, and lots of information for the veteran that's suffering. Right. So if you've got mental health problems, you can't find anybody, go on to Ustream, yeah. log on to Cenotaph, which is free, and hopefully there's some help there for you. Brilliant. Oh, that's really, really good. Yeah. Fantastic. Keeps me out of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's brilliant. Thank you so much for your time. It's been fascinating to talk well, about the you're boat. you're very welcome. I'm a big fan of your program. You're very, very fair and you're so enthusiastic with <laughs> boats. So you're very you kind. Can tell. Yeah, no, it is. It's, it's, um, it's been a dream come true for me. I've been in the industry a long time, but this yeah. YouTube thing has been very recent for me. So, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's pleasing to see the way that's developed. Good. Sure. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again. And, um, as ever, huge thanks to you guys for watching. Let me know what you think of Jim's boat in the comments. Be kind. <laughs> and um... Yeah, about the boat, not about me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can absolutely. imagine what they're going to uh, queuing up to say things about me. And don't forget to subscribe. Yeah, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe, as all proper YouTubers say. Fantastic. Okay, thank you so much, Jim. We yeah. will uh, we'll catch you on another video very soon. Cheers. Cheers. Bye-bye. Right.